OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. A11Y you often see, and it's a numeron. I had never in my life heard of what a numeron is, but it's something in which they use a number to represent the number of letters. And apparently they thought accessibility was too long a word. So it starts with an A, it ends with a Y, and there are 11 letters in between. Literally, that's what it is, which I thought was clever. All right, so if you see it, this is accessibility. Welcome, come on in, join us. I won't get in anyway. Um, a little about me. I taught since 1987 uh, in basic skills is what I ended up in, um, various programs. And that gave me a lot of sympathy and understanding for the various programs that we have, older adults, adults with disabilities, high school, um, distance learning. I was right on the cusp of distance learning when I retired, which was that summer after COVID started. Uh, my grandkids moved in with me. And so that is my focus now. So I work with OTAN and uh, with uh, my grandkids. Um, I'm a jack of all trades in the way of many things with OTAN. I write four, uh, I write courses. Right now the Google courses are being changed into Canvas courses. So now I'm learning about Canvas. And I work with uh, teaching with technology as well. And so, and I do presentations. Um, the things that I'm focused on at OTAN, the specific ones that I've kind of been the umbrella that they've given me, um, one is tips. And there is a presentation on tips later on. Um, it's the triple E framework. And this is a framework for teaching that is simplified. And is so, once you learn it, it's like you go, well, this is this just makes sense. How to make technology serve the students and the learning rather than just be the fun stuff that technology is. And so we work with that, we're presenting that. Um, I also work with CK12. If you are involved with materials, resources, I need things for my students. CK12 is one that you want to know about because it's free and it's excellent. And uh, it is like having a textbook online that has everything in it, including videos, simulations, all of this AI in the course. And it's free and you can customize it so that what happened today in the news, you can put in the course tonight and talk about it with your students. So that's another one that's very important. And I love Google and I never, um, I never feel that I'm enough about Google. Of course, they keep changing stuff. So, <laughs> all right. All right. The goals today accessibility, it's you. And I promise you, if you're going to feel overwhelmed, the first time it was presented to me some years ago, my first comment was crap. Oh my goodness. Because I realized everything I was doing was wrong. All the presentations, all of my resources, everything that I was so proud that I created that looked so good was wrong. And so I'm expecting that response from everyone else. <laughs> um, but I wanted you to understand why it's important. Um, we're gonna look at how California stacks up with the nation. I wanna teach you how to fish because if you're gonna know how to fish, you need to have a tackle box full of tools. And so that's one of my primary focuses today is to have you have that experience. I want you to have the experience. And we could please get to share the screen. Oh. So I have to share it to uh, Zoom. Oh, thank you. So they're all kind of sitting there. My fault. They well, I should have known better because I use Zoom all the time and I know you're supposed to share your screen. And so go ahead and get out and do what you need to do. Okay, okay. can they see it now? Yes. Okay. All right. Oh, look, now we get to see everybody. Okay. Well, all right. Okay. So I want you to have an experience of a screen reader. That's important because that's what you're creating too. And so I want you to have that experience. We're going to look at something that's called POR, and it's an acronym for various aspects of accessibility. So we're going to look at that. We are going to focus on Microsoft. 
not because it's the best, but because in a real way, it was one of the first that actually started addressing accessibility. So many of the features that Microsoft has been focused on for quite a few years, others are now getting to do. And so we're gonna do Microsoft, not because I'm giving it an endorsement, just because you will have many, many materials and lots and lots of helps from them. Okay, um, we're going to look at um, uh, Microsoft and we're going to use the accessibility checker and I'm gonna demonstrate it. I'm hoping that you will be able to do it too. And if you can, I'm going to give you the slides and there's a link to it to documents that you can practice on. Okay, now, when are we supposed to be done by? Uh, not till 11. And we had a question in Zoom. Okay. Um, someone wants to know, did you, did you just bring up the term CK12? Yes. I thought so. Yes, she did. Yes, CK12 is a presentation. I'm giving it a plug, it's later. Um, because it's free and it's magnificent. And I think that because of that, it might be now. Okay, all right, so let's go to the end. I want you to ask questions all along the way. Don't wait till the end. Um, we will be going live. Fingers crossed that I can make this, all the this stands at 1140. I just wanted you to know Thank that you. according yeah. to the schedule. Right. Thank you, 1140. 1140, okay. Minutes. I wish the clock was right there. I know. <laughs> it's much better. It's only for the students, not for you. Sorry. I guess it. And this lady's droning on for <laughs> Okay. All right, so let's go. All right. Maybe here? Nope, not here. Okay, I'm not sure how to advance slides now. Oh, the, and we're using the, this. Just use the trackpad and click on the, oh, the track slide. Pad. Yeah. Where on the slide? Anywhere on the slide. Just on it, anywhere? Yeah. Just the trackpad. Okay, all right. I'm going to have to use my notes with this because it's all numbers. This is to understand how large disabilities are in the world. Um, the, according to the World Health Organization, one billion people on the, in the world live with disabilities. That includes 360 million who have hearing disabilities, uh, 285 vision, 300, uh, 380 um, that are working people with disabilities. And I thought, now why would they be bringing that out? except that, that means that the workplace needs to be functional for them to be successful. In the United States, 61 million have disabilities, 26%, that's one in four, have some type of disability. Um, so it's large, it's large, but not just the numbers, not just that you're saying, okay, I don't want to exclude that, that group, that, that large number of people that would not have access. Um, if we approach teaching and the resources we create with the people who struggle in mind, we will help many, many. In fact, we will find that we will also in, in, uh, improve our teaching for everyone. Okay, if we're looking at California. Oh, okay. Now... I don't know, uh, what, are they seeing the screen with this on it? Uh, it depends on, on their local, how, how they're, if okay. they have it open or not. Okay, all right. Well, I'm not sure how to make That's it so fine. you can see everything on the screen, but it's okay. This is California and how we stack up. And you can see that 11% have mobility problems. 11% uh, have cognition problems. Now that's maybe not something you thought as a disability unless you have it, <laughs> and you understand that it does give you great difficulties. We have 5% with independent living, 5% hearing, 5% vision, and 4% self-care. Some of those, when you look at, you may not think of them as disabilities um, because we are so focused on thinking it's mobility and it's hearing and it's seeing. But these things impair their lives. They have they struggle with them and they don't get to participate equally because of it. Um, the number for California is 7,090,015. Don't forget the 15, I'm sure they want to be there, which actually ends up to be about the same as the nation. One in four people who suffer from some form of disability. Um, 
But think about it. When you use your phone, how many of you use a pinch to make things bigger? <laughs> Are you disabled? No, so we're using the same adaptive equipment to fit our own needs. I have found as I, um, I don't like to say gotten older, but saying I matured sounds bad too. Um, but as I have become more experienced in life, I find that there are times I will open a magazine and I can't read the print because of the color contrast. I didn't have that problem before. And the first time I saw it, I thought, it must be doing something different. <laughs> Not that it was me, but it was the magazine. But that's also dealing with accessibility. Color contrast is a big issue. And as we address it, we then help me read the book too. All right. Um, no. Okay. So one reason that you should be addressing accessibility and around yourselves and you can see who the up and coming people are and realize that in a couple more years, this room will be full. The second reason we need to do this is because it's a law. In 1973, some of you don't remember that year, <laughs> we had the Rehabilitation Act, and that's where things started, okay? Um, we had Section 508. Then there was the Americans with Disability Act, and the federal government issued that anything that the federal government produced would have to fall under this. Congress changed it to th say that it was anyone who was um, funded by the government, which of course makes educators involved with that. Um, in 1998, Congress amended that act to include electronic and technical and internet devices. Um, and then in 2017, they said that by 2018, everyone had to comply with the web content accessibility guidelines, which you will hear as a podcast. And you'll hear that and they'll say it real fast and you have no idea what they're saying. And for me, I was too afraid to raise my hand and say, what? <laughs> but that is what is very commonly. People will say it's YCAG compliant, it's YCAG 2.0, it's Y2.1. And as it advances and gets more um, strict, uh, more exacting, we will need to be more compliant as well. Now, I think this is one of my very most favorite pictures. I taught ABE, Adults Basic Education, and I had students who had disabilities, um, wheelchair, um, hearing, um, vision. And we've just been talking about the law. And what happens with the law, my observation, is that you don't worry about it until it comes in your neighborhood. Um, a few years back, it's gotten more because we've advanced. Um, in Sacramento, the Domino's, there was a lawsuit with the Domino's uh, pizza because their online uh, way to order pizza um, was not compliant for people with disabilities. And they went to court and there was a lot presented and they lost. And so you suddenly get your restaurants becoming compliant because they lost. We will have the same happen to us. Education just needs the lawsuits. <laughs> Suddenly we will all go, oh, now I have to pay attention. Um, Can but, I add something, yes. Debbie? Uh -huh. um, I recently read this book, Haben, um, by Haben Gurma, who is uh, the first deaf and blind woman who graduated from Harvard. She's, it's just an extraordinary uh, memoir in which she says how uh, disability drives innovation. Um, she was not able to see the menu at her college. And she constantly asked for a certain, like, print for her, right? Like the erase dots, and she used different types for that, right? And she got so frustrated that she felt like she was the one to who had to bring it up all the times. She was like, I don't know, is this my responsibility to always ask for it? I just don't know what's on the menu. 
So I can see that, you know, like for one student or one person who needs it, we need to think of that person and not exclude that. It's part of equity. Absolutely true. And the thing that's really cool is that you can make that difference. You can start it at your school and then let it branch out. And again, when I first got into this, it seemed like so much work. Um, but times have improved. It's not that I've suddenly become brilliant and now I can do it. <laughs> Things have changed. Uh, Microsoft has changed. And so they have tried to make it so that if you just do a few things, the magic happens behind the door. So we're going to be looking at that. But you're correct. If your student has the courage to let you know that they can't see it or they can't hear it or it's too small or it's too big or their screen reader can't handle it, I applaud them because it takes so much courage to be that person that stands up and says, please do something to help me. My experience with my students was not that they are the ones that are out with the megaphone and they're picketing and they're protesting. No, they're like this. They adapt. They figure out a way to make it so that they can still go on that trail. They can still participate. And they are so grateful for every single thing you do. And that's, that's one of my favorites. Okay. Um, Accessibility is the key that unlocks information for everyone. As we make our information accessible across all sensory channels, or at least more than one. And this is one of the things that technology is really helpful with because, okay, I give you a textbook. It's not in Braille. You can't read it. But if I digitize the textbook and you click on the button that allows the screen reader to read it to you, you can now read the textbook. And so thinking in terms of what you present in your classroom and have it presented in multiple channels, whether it's um, that they are, it's, it's being read to you or it's being, um, you can see it or you uh, can have it described to you. These are things that we can start looking at in what we present. Can I move this thing? Or yes. Like that? Oh, I like that. Maybe I can move that. Oh, I like that too. All right. Another one. Navigation on the internet is mind-boggling. How many times have you sat there and just looked and, and you can't see it? I want to print this screen. There's no print button. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? That kind of stuff. So presenting more than one way of navigation or even if you just explain the navigation so that they understand how they're going to be able to get around. Screen readers, as I'm learning, and I'm just at the beginning of learning how incredibly powerful they are, use clues so that they can navigate the screen like you do. You are going to go down and you're going to find what you want to look at. When you look at a table of contents, when you work through a book, I don't want that, I don't want that, I don't want that. Well, what happens if you're blind? How are they going to discern where to get screen readers adapt to do to that so that they can tell um, headings and that they can then do it as a table of contents. And you've seen some of these things. You'll go get to a web page, and right at the beginning, there's these links. You click them, and they just take you to a place in the article. And you're thinking, well, I could have just scrolled, but they can't. So it allows them to get to the place and be able to do the same things you as sighted can do. Um, and the last point, uh, by implementing accessibility best practices, you will improve usability for all the users, not just the disabled. So doing this, adapting, creating, changing, um, will make your teaching in your classroom more accessible for everyone. All right. Okay, we'll try that one. Okay, all right. Penny Pearson um, of OTAN um, taught me accessibility. And she is from Alaska and she loves to fish. And so this was her illustration and I thought it was very appropriate. If I just give you a fish, then you get a fish dinner. But if I teach you to fish, it's more involved and it'll take me some time and you're gonna need a tackle box. 
And so that's what we're looking at today. We're going to, my goal is to give you as many possible tools and some sources so that when you have too many tools and you just are overwhelmed, places you can go back. Okay, so that's that's my goal. All right, now, oh, when you turned that on, did you turn on the sound? We want to share the sound. Um, can I help you? Yes, I just need to make sure that you're going to hear the sound when I start this. Now that I've used this, but I teach a high flex class. Oh, there it is, share sound. Excellent. Oh, it's a good practice for me to learn. <laughs> there you go. All right. So now this is a screen reader. You can Google this and they will give you many screen readers. And the experience is pretty amazing because some of these people, the person using it is narrating how it works for them, which is very cool. But this one is the one that I started. And I want you to just listen. They're going to tell you to close your eyes at a certain point and try and visualize what you would be seeing on the screen if you were only using the screen reader. Okay. People often ask what sound. difference it makes if a document is accessible, or they say they know that there is no one with a okay. receiving their call. All right. Do I have a no guarantees? Let's stop this. And um. Is there a place on the screen where we can raise the sound? The one we can get out of the presentation and then. Oh, maybe that's it. Okay. Okay, so that should. Okay, so let's try it again. No. Okay, so we're going to stop sharing. And then we're going to go back to sharing. And we're, we've got the share sound, and we're going to do the full screen. It's muted there. Can you tap on the screen? Oh, very good. Ask what difference it makes if a document is accessible, or they say they know that there okay. is no one with a disability that will be receiving their content. There are no guarantees. Do Documents are often shared among others. Not. You don't want, want inaccessible documents attributed to your here. name or okay, your so company. Additionally, okay. many accessibility Let features actually over. benefit and improve the reading experience way. for everyone. Um, Today, we want to simulate what someone who uses a specific well, type of assistive technology, a screen reader, encounters when they access a poorly structured document. Then we'll show you what their experience is like once the document has been made accessible. Keep in mind that screen readers are just one type of assistive technology. There are many different types of disabilities and subsequently many varying technologies for people to use and experience content. In this video, read it out loud if people can. Screen reader simulation. People often People ask often what difference it makes if a document is accessible, or they say they or know they that there is no one with a disability that will be receiving their content. There are no content. guarantees. But documents are often shared among others. You don't want an inaccessible document attributed to your name or your company. Additionally, many accessibility features actually benefit and improve the reading experience for everyone. Today, we want to simulate what someone who uses a specific type of assistive technology a and, screen reader um, encounters when they access a poorly structured document. Then we'll show you what their experience is like um, once the document has been made accessible. Than I am. Keep in um, mind that screen readers are just one type of assistive technology. technology. There are many right. different types of disabilities, and subsequently, many varying technologies many varying for people to use people and experience use content. content. In this video, Cami, one of our Section 508 specialists, is going to walk you through two scenarios to demonstrate the impact of creating accessible materials. Accessible materials. First, take First, a look at this. PDF. Take a look at this. We have PDF. colored, large have colored, text, large graphics, text graphics, a process flow, a process flow, lists, lists and, and link, link text. text. Okay. What else? So do it's you pretty see? standard. What now we're going see? to simulate. Now we're going to simulate using a screen reader, using a screen reader. by covering up by covering the, up the document. This is how someone okay. using a screen reader would experience. Can hear the audio? No. And we went up, and I even stopped the share and turned it back on. And he found the sound, and we went to a higher number. Okay. It's YouTube. Yes. Yeah. And this is the video. Yes. Have a treat. Yes. Select the file that you want to use. Okay. So we have the file.
Uh, they say they're hearing it in Zoom, so it must be about the speaker selection. Oh, they're hearing it in Zoom. That's interesting. You're just not hearing it here. That's right. right. The speakers have connected. Well, I'm trying to watch it on Zoom. It's not letting me. <laughs> okay. Wow. They're all messed up. <laughs> it's frozen. It's frozen. Can you um, click on something with the mouse? There we go. Okay, that's all right. Now let's back. go back. So back, I don't know how to do. Uh, your your keyboard. keyboard. One more. There it is. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to use the mouse. I want to watch what you do. Well, I want to. Here we go. I want to see. People often ask what difference it makes if a document is accessible, or they say they know that there is no one with a disability that will well, be receiving their content. The, there are no guarantees. Yeah, exactly. Documents are often so shared among others. You don't want an inaccessible document. Okay. I don't know if everybody here is okay. The Zoom, the Zoom uh, colleagues can hear them. I'm sorry. Can read. I can read. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just fine. Fine. Yes, it's just fine. Yes, it's fine. All right. We don't want you to go through this. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Right. 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 That's what I'm wrong. People often ask what difference it makes if a document is accessible, or they say they know that there is no one with a disability that will be receiving their content. There are no guarantees. Documents are often shared among others. You don't want an inaccessible document attributed to your name or your company. Additionally, many accessibility features actually benefit and improve the reading experience for everyone. Today, we want to simulate what someone with a specific type of assistive technology. That, that's down where a screen reader you encounters when they access so a poorly structured that. document. Right. Then we'll show you um, what their okay. experience is like once the document has been made accessible. Keep in mind that screen Keep readers, are just, that screen readers are just one type and of assistive technology. Of there are many different types of disabilities and, and subsequently many varying technologies like for people to use and experience content. In this video, Cami, one of our Section 508 specialists, is going to walk you through two scenarios to demonstrate the impact of creating accessible materials more you can find First, out take a look at this PDF. okay so we they're telling you about this is a pretty interesting document I, I process flow so this. it's not that any and link text what else okay, do you so see? now they're going to use now we're going to simulate and have the screen reader read you you're then by to covering have your eyes up the document to what he this says. is how someone um, using a screen reader would experience interesting uh, interacting with kids kids of any age sing a song all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put humpty together again humpty dumpty sat on a wall humpty dumpty had a great fall has a great fall have a treat select a graphic item bullet french graphic fries ice graphic Play the graphic, Enjoy travel the graphic to graphic flavor. McDonald's, travel to graphic activities McDonald's. and play, try activities some of these, play. play a board Rise game, the make, a a board game. make a paper plate mask, go to the mask. park, go send to the an park. email to get send more, email uh, great, to get ideas. more great, great ideas, graphic logo, graphic logo JPEG. Um, was that what you expected was that what you to hear? To hear? Was all okay. the content clearly, read? It did not clearly, describe this page was not created in an accessible manner. Let's now, now let's listen, listen to, to the, how the screen they now changed the, the content. The, the, um, now that we've remediated the document, the, the document, right? and, and so now they're local. going to read it to you. Heading level, level one. Heading level one. Kids, kids can kids be of any age. age. Heading level two. Saw Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses. All the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Put Humpty together again. Heading level two, have a level two have a graphic, graphic, acquiring a tree process, process. See, level, see level, full description. Full description. Heading two, Heading two activities two and play, activities try some of these. Try some of these. three board. items, Listen star three board, item. play a star game, board, star play board, board, make game. a paper, play star board, mask, make a star board, go to the park, send a list, send us a link, email. 
to get some more great ideas. To get more great you ideas. should have noticed that the screen reader said that the screen reader said before the before the colored phrases, the graphic had a meaningful description a meaningful and was read in the proper order. And was read in the proper the order page. at the top of the page. The column content the column was read, content in, the was read in the proper there was order. A list there was a list the number that included the number of a link items. was indicated, a so, link that was indicated so that we can keyboard activate it with the keyboard process flow. and our process it had flow a description, had a brief description indicated that there's but a long description that there's a long description so that you can, so that one, you method can review one method one method of handling we're complex going to show graphics you one we're going to show you to one example of how to document. handle the graphic in Adding this level document. Two, Adding level two, acquiring the three process, list of three items, list of three one, items. Travel to one, travel to McDonald's, two, select an item, two, list of two items, items. nesting list of two level one, items. Nesting a level one. A french fries, a B, ice cream, list ends, nesting list level, level three. three. I enjoy the flavor. A numbered list structure was used to show order and a sub list helps identify the hierarchy of the content. Hopefully, you can see how important it is to structure your kind of structure. This kind of structure can be applied to all Office documents and PDFs. Moving along to the next scenario, we also want to show you the impact of not providing the proper reading order in PowerPoint. That is one of the most common issues found in PowerPoint. Study this slide. Next page. Okay, as time has gone on, they have created an acronym, and you can write this in um, Google it, and you will get much information about this. It, the acronym is FORC, and it stands for things need to be perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. Okay. I don't know if we'll be able to read fast enough, but you guys can read. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you can take a break. Um, All right. I'll let you read it yourselves. Did we get the Many closed the captioning on? Available to educators. Now oh, include options for adding accessibility. Okay, that one's a problem because, oh, there we go. And standards such as the web. Okay, now let's try it. Okay, there we go. Content accessibility guidelines provide guidance for how to do so. However, these guidelines often include technical language that can be confusing to even veteran developers. Fortunately, a set of simpler principles, as captured by the acronym POOR, provide a better starting point. POOR stands for perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust, four qualities that define an accessible user experience. Perceivable content is presented in a way that it can be accessed with more than one sense. This accounts for both the needs of people with disabilities and those who are accessing the content in less than optimal environmental conditions. One example is the inclusion of closed captions and transcripts for video content. This will make the video more accessible to people who are deaf and hard of hearing. It will also make it possible for anyone to enjoy the content in loud environments where it would otherwise be inaccessible, such as while commuting on a train or a bus. Operable content in digital materials can be operated with a variety of input methods, ranging from the mouse to the keyboard and even speech commands. It also means options for navigation are provided. If the content of a digital material is marked up correctly, screen reader users can use a keyboard shortcut to bring up a list of headings. Using these headings, they can skip to the desired section without the need to listen to an entire page. Understandable content in digital materials is presented in a logical and predictable way as the user navigates through its various sections, and supports for language, such as explanations of unfamiliar terms, are included or easily accessible. Robust digital materials are compatible across platforms and work well with a range of assistive technologies. Designing digital materials according to widely supported standards will make it more likely that these materials will continue to work as intended as new delivery technologies are adopted. The four poor principles apply to both teacher-created and procure educational materials, whether they are commercially acquired or open educational resources. When selecting or purchasing digital materials and technologies, use the power of the market Call on developers and publishers to add accessibility at the source. This will ensure accessibility is built in rather than bolted on after materials have shipped and the process of retrofitting becomes more costly and difficult. The Palm Initiative can help you with language you can include in your contracts. By addressing the need for accessibility at the source with developers and publishers, you will add your voice to a national movement that seeks greater equity in education. 
The National Center on Accessible really Education materials, materials at, that at AEM.cast.org is your go-to resource for technical assistance. Together, we can develop and use learning materials that address learner variability and provide better opportunities for learning to all. Okay. All right. I particularly like the page when they showed you what the screen reader presents the blind person where all of the headings are there. So they that is them scrolling. That is them doing what you are doing this way or scrolling down the page. They can just read through them and then click and go to the place where they need to go. So very, very good. All right. Okay, so we're going to look a little bit more at them. This is poor, which you can't see because it's right at the top. Make sure the learner can see and hear your content. Add alternative text to images and other visuals. And that's one that you probably are aware of. What is the alt text? Okay. Close captioned videos or provide transcripts or provide both. Okay. Provide sufficient color contrast between the text and its background and avoid content that can trigger seizures. Just yesterday, I was working on a presentation with one of the other presenters. And I went to pick a color for some of the text and I picked red and she says, oh, no, no, please don't turn pick red. Because for her, it causes her, it, she didn't call it a seizure, but it was, it was very, very unpleasant. So she said, just don't ever use red. And that's something that you learn. You learn which colors work and the contrast that you need to have. Also green and red cannot be seen well by all um, by everybody, I should say, I don't know exactly who, but I know some some people do not distinguish or cannot see them well. Like my son's colorblind, oh, so he can't see certain colors. Mm -hmm. And the colors are different yeah. for different people. Absolutely. There's a large group that's red and green, which makes Christmas boring, but <laughs> it also makes <laughs> driving kind of scary. <laughs> but there's other color, colors that for some people they can't distinguish, which we will look at a little, little bit later. But that means that if you're using color to communicate some information, you aren't communicating with them. Kind of something to think about. Okay, let's see if I can do it. Nope. This way. Okay. Um, this is PO. This is BO. Uh, make sure your learners can interact with your contact content with a variety of tools. Okay. Um, provide clear structure with proper marking, proper marked up headings. Create descriptive links that make sense out of context. Provide sufficient time for interaction and response. That one wasn't one that I included readily. I was not comfortable with silence. You know, okay. And so I would just move on, not realizing that not everybody reads at the same pace and not everybody even understands as quickly. And so providing extra time is also something to add. Make sure that the content does not rely on color alone. You um, make sure that learners can understand your content and enjoy a predictable experience. What this means is that you always do it the same way which kind of bakes off creativity. I'm a little bored. I think I'll change it, change things up. That doesn't work well. Okay? It, it demands extra effort on their part and they may lose it. And so make, your, make it a predictable experience and that once they've learned the pattern that you're presenting in, that they continue with it. Clarify expectations through clear directions and models. Follow conventions to ensure a predictable and consistent experience. Use plain language. That one was, um, I didn't really quite understand, except that we are a worldwide people. And so if it's going to be in English, let them know it's in English so that the screen reader can read it in English. And so let that be known and indicate the language of your content. All right. And the last one are um, robust. Ensure that your content will work well with the current and future technologies. Now that's tough. The future technologies haven't happened yet. But just expect that that is something that you are going to be addressing. Um, think about CDs. Mm -hmm. I have stacks of CDs, and I don't have a computer that plays them anymore because I couldn't buy a computer that had a CD on it. So the world changes. Um, you add metadata to make your content easier to find and use. And this is something that I'm just learning about. I love to do family history and you have all those old photographs and you can put metadata on it and it travels with the picture telling time, people, event, valuable. 
So this is valuable across all areas. Perform the accessibility check, all right, and perform basic assistive technology testing. Okay, so we're going to use Microsoft. I'm going to demonstrate. We're first of all going to go through it. You're going to go, oh my goodness, the list. You will have a copy of this presentation so that you don't need to, because it gets very much a lot of stuff to look at. And again, the reason we're using um, Microsoft is that they provide errors, warnings, and tips because it's levels of how bad it is. So you definitely want to get rid of all the errors. Warnings you want to address too, but then they also give you tips. And so if they are trying to assist it with you, but it doesn't do everything and there will be times. It's also changing. Uh, as YCAG is getting more, mm, strict sounds so unkind. <laughs> as it's tightening up, in other words, you had to get to the top of the mountain and they knew they couldn't do it in one step. So they're taking steps to get you there. And so as the step moves, you're going to feel like, which means that as you start making changes, you might want to make changes, not just to pass now, but to be well within so that it'll pass next time too. Um, we're going to use the tools, especially styles. And we will also in PowerPoint, we are going to use the placeholders. Okay, so we are looking at Word first, and this is um, the, where we have a list. Okay, use the built-in headings and styles. This is what, when you used to highlight the word and you changed the size and you bolded it, and then because now it needs a little extra space, you just went enter, enter. It takes care of all that. Never use the enter key. When you choose the heading, it will make it the right size. And it will be sequential so that like if you start with title and then you go heading one, heading two, there's a hierarchy, okay, with them. Uh, fonts need to be at least 12, bigger is better. Um, sans serif, serifs are the little things that go on the letters at the bottoms and the top. They don't work well with screen readers. And so just find fonts and they're making new fonts. I just learned about a font that I'm going to put on. Next one. Say it again. Lexen. Lexen. Yes. And I want I just to found out about that yes. one too. Yeah. Lexen. Um, it's supposed to be the most uh, one of the better fonts to read across the board, especially for people with dyslexia. Yeah. I found out about it last last week. I yeah. Yeah. It's, it's new. And of course it's free. So you just need to add it to your fonts. Oh, okay. Oh. So yeah, true. go through the fonts and you can see. I use it in uh, Google Docs. Like the most user friendly. Yeah. yeah. Well, and it addresses all the these uh, well, like um, dyslexia. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. All right. So yes, you will want to do that. And this is another thing they suggest: don't use italics and don't use uppercase for emphasis. Okay. Yeah. These things are hard for the screen reader, so that's why you're not doing it. Spacing. How about, sorry, how about the italics for titles? This was the instruction given to okay, me. Okay, and, okay. and it was not given with a little dot that says, and in this situation, we are trying for the most accessible. Okay. 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 All right. Sorry, I didn't know. No, 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 that's fine because those are all the feelings that I've had when I've been all of them like, well, how about this? And how about this? And, but this looks better. Um, okay. Spacing. You will not use the enter key. All spacing is done by choosing the correct heading, and it will then put the spacing between the paragraphs. Then it, the screen reader will not do this. It will not come to the end of the paragraph and say space. Then the next one is he, uh, he's dealing with um, commands. And so if you have commanded the machine to do the space space, it'll say it. Okay, alt text, all images have to have some kind of description, and that's called alternative text or alt text. Um, don't use text boxes, word art, or watermarks, okay? Columns, okay, this was another way that we could be creative. I want the image over here, and so I'll just use a two column, and I won't do anything, and that'll put the image where I want it to be. Screen reader goes nuts. <laughs> so, can't do that. Um, if you're going to make columns and use columns, use the column command, and that's also true with tables. We're not going to really do much with tables because they're a tiny bit more complicated, but they are addressed in Microsoft. As long as you go to the table and you create it there, 
and you put headings in it, the screen reader can read it. Okay, continuing. Everything must be screen reader accessible. You will check that with the accessibility checker. Um, colors need contrast. Don't use color to, do, to convey meaning so that if the wrong answers are all red, the you know, right answers are all blue. Nope. Uh, have digital alternatives for printed copy. This is a new world for many, many, many people who before had no access because the classroom was text and you gave them a book and that's what they, that's the only choice they had. So unless they could have a person who went to the class with them and read the text to them, they did not get to be a part of your class. So always have a digital alternative. And that's becoming more and more prevalent where some of our textbook um, uh, publishers are dealing with this for you. So take a look. They may have it already for you so that it's available online and then people can read it that way. Hyperlinks. What's a hyperlink? It means they get to the website, right? Right. It's what you click to go someplace else. Um, don't use click here. Select here. That's meaningless. To someone who's blind, it's meaningless. So have it an intelligent one. Like if it's going to Khan Academy, write Khan Academy. And then they'll click it. And then it, it's an intelligent one. Um, also, don't leave the whole URL because the screen reader will read every oh, no. single letter to them. Can you imagine some of those that are three lines long? <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, provide a table of contents. And I'm gonna show you how simple this is. Um, if you use headers, there's a button you push. You, well, first you put yourself where you want the table of contents because wherever your cursor is, that's where they're going to put it. So if you're not thinking, you end up with down there. So be sure you put it where you want it. And then you click on the button and they put the headers in the correct order and they are all links to the places in your document. So it's very cool. Use the accessibility checker and test with immersive reader. Okay. Immersive reader is something that uh, Microsoft has. And I added this slide because I had this experience. I am changing uh, Moodle courses to Canvas courses. And I had created worksheets and the worksheets had lines for the students to write on, okay? So I just wanted to try this immersive reader like I told you to do, I wanted to try it. So I opened up one of my worksheets and it read, use the link from WikiHow titled how to write a paragraph. Now, the immersive reader is better than some of the um, screen readers. You can, but some of the screen readers, you can actually get different, different voices. They can be British, they can be male, they can be female. Yeah, you can have some fun. All right, but anyway, so I'm going through this. I'm thinking I'm doing great. Fill in the outline of the article, part one, part one, underscore, 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 underscore. <laughs> I just started laughing mm -hmm. because all of my worksheets, all the lines were going to no longer be accessible. So try the immersive reader. It will, maybe you'll come away going, oh yes, I'm good. Or maybe you'll go, oh no, I have more than that. So I had to change all of them. Okay, now we're going to look at PowerPoint, okay? Use the built-in slide designs. Again, it is because the screen reader is looking for them. If they are there, it can do a hierarchy of what's happening in the PowerPoint, okay? Slide reading order. When we look at a slide, we kind of look at it the way we want to. We may go left to right, we may go top to bottom, we may go biggest to smallest, but we get to choose what we're doing. The screen reader is at a loss to do it the way you want it. Now it's gonna do it in its way, unless you tell it otherwise, but you can. You can tell them to look to the image first, and then do the title or do the title or do the page number. You can, you can tell it. So pay attention to, or, uh, to the um, slide order. Um, slide animations and transitions are no. Text in images. This makes perfect sense, but I don't know why I never thought of it. You can't have it, but you're going to have it. So in your alt text, be sure that the words that are on that screen are read to them, or they will have no idea what's there. Use captions. Subtitles, alternative audio tracks and video, use all text with all visuals, and again, an alternative source of information. Hyperlinks, make sure they're meaningful. 
sufficient color contrast. And um, we'll look at that briefly. Uh, simple tables, font 18 or bigger, and the accessibility checker. And I skipped this one. Each slide needs to have a unique title. Now, to you, you know this section of five slides are all about Google Docs, Google Docs, Google Docs. But the screen reader can't put them in any sensible order unless you make sure that the titles have different, some something different, so that they can reference and find it. Okay. Okay. Color contrast. This is from um, Color Contrast, and it's. It's called the color, con uh, it's, I'm looking here, it's the contrast analyzer. And um, it's a free app that you get and you can just put it at the bottom of your screen and as a button and you can come up at any time and check the contrast between your background and the color of your letters. So you can do that. And um, this one was never important to me until now. <laughs> and so there are times when I get my grandkids to come in and read to me because I can't do that. Okay, all right, this is my website, um, and this presentation is there, as well as some documents for you to practice with. Now, I'm going to try and make it so that you're going to practice with it today. Um, I'm hoping that we're 11.40, is that what you said? Okay, all right, then there should be time. Um, you're going to see that this is a listing of some of the resources available. And I truly mean some. Uh, at that site, I have the videos that you didn't get to listen to, <laughs> as well as some more videos. Um, there's an accessibility toolkit, checklists, learning accessible uh, modules, um, infographics, practice sheets. And I think we're going to go there. So I'm going to stop the share and I'm going to go. Here. Okay. All right. Now I'll start the share again. Mm -hmm. Can I click on the right. Okay. Okay. Share the sound screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Share. Okay. Now you will have seen this before. This is the OTAN website. And well, let me go first to this is the presentation site that, that I just gave you the address to. And at it, there's this page, there's accessibility resources. And all the presentations that I've given um, are here so that you have them and you can go through them when you need to. Um, if we go to accessibility resources, You see the videos. Um, and there's a couple of other ones that I ran across that I really liked. Um, this one is the one that you saw about before. This one is on how to use the color contrast analyzer. Very, very clear, very simple. So those are good. Um, then these are resources. And this is a list of great resources. Um, we're gonna look at some of them. And down at the bottom, there's some documents that you can practice. Also, there's 508 compliance checklists. That's useful. There's um, Excel, PowerPoint, Word. And so we have the legal documentation too. All right. Now I would show these. Well, let me see. I want to show you this one. This is done by the poor people, P-O-U-R. And it's really quite remarkable because there were all those sections. And then here's all the links to learn how to do every single one of those things that they say you're supposed to do. Oxford Guide to Plain English. <laughs> There's just, it. Uh, there, it's interesting what they've got here. Oops, pardon me. Okay, so I like that one. I also, the accessibility tips by California EL Civics Exchange. That one is very good. This one was created. This is the one that, that was given to me first. And so it's, it's a document that talks about all the things that we talked about, images, spacing, tables, and they're all here in this document. 
Now it's not linked. This is, but oh, I'm wrong. There's the color contrast analyzer. And I'm going to go quickly, but it talks about hyperlinks and all the things we talked about. And here we've got links to accessibility. Uh, PDF compliance checklist. And I want to show you the very last page. Okay, more about the color. There's several color analyzers out there, okay? Um, they talk about hex codes and stuff like that. But these were tutorials. Now, lynda.com is not called lynda.com anymore, okay? So, um, but they have amazing things. It's LinkedIn now, and all of accessibility is there. So it's there for you. Um, but we also have more helpful links for you. All right. Now, the other thing I wanted to, okay. I was bring up for the owl. Okay. Um, So this is one place you can find resources. Uh, let's see. If you go to OTAN, And you go to their resources and you go to accessibility resources. That used to be that my list was identical to their list, but they keep updating theirs. <laughs> and so this is really good. This is a good place to go. And they've got them organized. Um, this accessibility flyer, um, they are very good looking. Let me show you what they look like. This is something that when you go back to your teachers and you want something to show them, the basics. Oh, very nice. And they have it for PowerPoint, Word. Okay. All right. Let's go back. Okay. So that's that's there. They also getting started. You're going to feel like you're a newbie. And so a good place to get started, resources for people with specific disabilities. If you have a student and you're just at a loss to know how to address their needs, that's here. My uh, Microsoft, the accessibility section is very good. Actually, it's huge. Every time I go back to Microsoft and the things that they have, it's just huge. Um, and, and constantly they're working on it to keep it going. So um, lots there. PDFs, that's my emphasis right now. Apple, Google, accessibility, browsers, more word about those. Website content accessibility, alt text and captioning, color contrast checkers, uh, making audio, video, and presentations accessible. And then this is a presentation that this presentation was based on. It was given by Penny and it's a couple of years old. But so it is here and notice this is presented the way it has to be done online. So you've got your closed caption. You also have your transcript. And in this, they also include the um, description of what is happening on the screen. And you've seen this in movies where they will say, mysterious music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, actually. Yeah. It makes me laugh. Not that mysterious, but anyway, that kind of thing is to <laughs> help get an equal experience to the people that are watching it. All right, now um, I want to show one more that's a favorite of mine. Let's see if I can find it. Okay, National Center on Accessible Educational Materials. Okay, this one is. It speaks to me. So I understand it. This, this one place was worth the whole thing, but the whole site's great. Personalizing the reading experience, customizing the display of information so that different browsers can use it. And they'll show you how it's done, um, how to resize the things you need to address. And then using read aloud, 
What do you need to do to be able to have your student use read aloud? And then try it yourself. What is your student experiencing? That's really useful because especially when you're trying to help your students speak to them about things, having gone through it and done it yourself, you can really make it so they will understand it better. Okay, let's go back up to the top because this whole place is cool. Create, designing for accessibility, documents, um, video, accessible STEM. Math is always a little more hard. Uh, websites, social media posts. For you to acquire more information about different things, decision-making and accessible formats. Defining accessibility. So if we go back to use, using accessible, accessible formats, personalizing reading, personalizing the writing experience, testing with accessible math, teaching, sorry, teaching with accessible math and teaching with accessible video. And it's a very friendly site so that you won't feel like, you know, you don't understand what they're talking about. Okay, so let's go back. Here at my website, there's one more thing available and that's practice pages so that you get to practice. And so there's a variety um, because you'll want to try it over and over again. But the one I wanna use and show and demonstrate today is accessibility practice word. And I want it in Microsoft and it's not, it's a doc. So how do I get it to, so that it's in Microsoft? File, file, download, Microsoft. So that's the first thing you wanna do. So that now you're seeing it in Microsoft. Maybe he didn't hear me. All right, we'll try it again. Oh, he did, it's at the bottom. Yes, always, okay. All right, now I'm using Lorem Ipsen. Oh, they died in two pages. Okay, all right. Now, what I'm going to show you has to do with the headings, okay? Now, if I come to this heading, let's see if, no, we're gonna have to do it here. And if you were on this document, you would be able to do it too. Okay, let's see if I can, there we go. Now, when I go here, the styles are here and they say it's the title style. So that's already there, that one's good. But so now let's come down and let's go to this one. And I'm gonna highlight it. And I've given you some clues. Go this way. So I'm gonna highlight it and I'm gonna go, I can go up here because the styles are here as well. They're right here, but they also open this little box right here so I can do it right there. So this one, I wanted it to be heading one. Did I get it? Yep, heading one, so it's verified. And then the next one, if I go down to the next down, and I highlight it, oops. Nope, not in the right spot. And I'm coming up here to styles, the shortcut, and I'm gonna pick two, heading two. Okay, all right, so now let's go down the document and I'll just be able to do all of See, there's a three here and a proposal and I can take the threes and the twos and the stuff off. Okay, so that way, well, I guess I better finish the rest of it or I can't show you how to put the, I lost it. There it is. Yeah. Okay. Oh. All right. No. Not gonna work. So what this means is that as you are putting in your headings, you do it as you go. When I have to go back and fix things, it takes longer. And I have to fix other things like if I put an extra space in. And I find that people who have made web pages, and if I take documents from web pages, they'll very often have extra spaces mm -hmm. so that 
this deal, I, you'll find them. Okay, we're doing three on this one. Okay. This one looks like there's some extra spacing. There's spacing above it and spacing below it. And I would think that's probably more than I'm going to want. So I'm going to go back to this one and I'm going to check right there. No, no, there's no extra, no extra. So we're good. And I can take the three out. Okay. And I'll go back up. Now I can also come up here and I can go here. If I want to see them, I can do it there. So I can do it there too. They have a variety of places for it. Okay. All right. So I've got my headings. Now, the next thing we've got is an image. Actually, there's a couple of images. One's a graph and one's a photograph. Okay. Now, at the same time that we're dealing with accessibility, we also are starting to deal with um, copyright and images. And where you got those images? I never paid any attention to that ever before. <laughs> I just found images and I put them in. And then I at least would ask Google to give me ones that I could legally choose. So I felt good about myself that I had done that. But now the thing that, and this all makes sense, if they want to find this image, where will they go? So I've got the link right there. But what's the screen reader going to do? Read every single letter. So that doesn't work. That's not helpful. So let's let's go down to this and make it a useful. Let's see if I okay. Now, how what do I need to do with this? I need to put this in a link. Okay, so is my screen not big enough? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, this isn't the one we're doing, working on. That one is. So let's maximize you. All right, there we go. All right, so. You're going to have to look at the picture and you're going to have to decide what to do with it. Let's go back up to the one I was working with. Now I have, oh, there, there it finally came. I was going, oh my. Wait a little while. Okay. Okay, so this is Renewable Energy Wyoming Foot Creek Image by Flickr, and there's the link. So, what should I do? Go to insert. I put it to the top. There it is, right there. Now, before I click on that, I need to highlight what I'm going to use. So, what do you think would be a good title for this? Uh, what you have on the top, renewable energy. Could do that one. Could do that one, renewable energy, Wyoming, except that. It's wind turbines, and I didn't say it was wind turbines. Mm -hmm. So look at it. What is it that you're trying to say with that picture? So you could just do a roll of wind turbines. Now, it would be even better maybe if you said it was in Wyoming, unless you don't care. They're a roll of wind turbines. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to try to do, is I need the link. That's what I'm going to add to it. And I'm going to copy this, control C, and then I'm going to come up to hyperlink. And the hyperlink has the link, the address, here's the address, and what I wanted to say, text to display. Okay, so that's what I'm going to erase that. That's not what I wanted to say. And that's where I'm going to put the other in. Okay. And I'm going to write wind turbines. Okay. 
Okay, so now I can erase this other part, okay? Because I've included the link of where they can find the picture if they want. The second thing is, it doesn't need to be the same size as all the fonts on the screen. In fact, if you started to look at this and begun to see it in magazines and stuff, sometimes it's so tiny you can't read it. <laughs> okay, so I can also make it smaller. Keep moving down screen. Okay, now I've got a graph. Okay. And the same thing's going to be true here, except that, okay, so I've got an image that I need to tell them where I got it. And I can do that right underneath it the same way we did it before. But I also need to tell them what this is. This is where I need to do the alt text. Okay, so in the image and then come up here to alt text. It's in review. All right. Okay. Oh, strange. All right. Usually, when you right click at the alt text, command comes up, and I'm puzzled why I'm having troubles. And usually, the accessibility is right here. So, well, while I'm here, I apologize. Maybe you right click, Debbie. I use more Google Docs, so. Um, it should you be right click. Now, on let, the let me get out of the image because maybe I'm. Maybe already... it didn't get selected, yeah. right? That's, that's the thing, is that it's not acting right. Okay, so there's the image. We've got the image. And let's come up here. Well, first, I'm going to right click. And then it should be format to... picture, the last one, I think. Well, usually it says an alt text, but maybe. And then um, I think it's the last one, um, like um, on the right there with alt text. Uh, yeah, like the, on the, yeah, I think there. No, maybe not there. Which one was it? Oh, uh, there it is. Okay, now what we're experiencing is versions of Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And exactly. so what your machine does may not look anything like what my machine does. And obviously, this is not what my machine looked like last night. Mm -hmm. And so if, if you're really struggling and having a hard time finding the alt text, then go to help. Where's the alt text? OK, so we're here to alt text. And they want a title um, and a description. And in the description, I need to be descriptive. So I need to say something about this, about the different levels and what they mean. So I might say something like, okay. Their description was that it's a chart. And so that's Microsoft trying to use artificial intelligence to say, this is a chart. And that's all they'll put unless you put something more. So this is, 
wind capacity by up five five countries. And if this was me, I would go through and because I can't see them because I need to scroll this up, then I'm wanting to move forward and get to PowerPoint. Um, I can't show which one is which, except that when you want to look at this graph, you'll realize the United States is really low. <laughs> okay, but I would put that here. I would put that in my alt text. Okay. Now, did I also do the picture above? We did the captioning. I mean, we, we put the where you find it down below, but I don't think we did the alt text on it. So let's go see if I can get the alt text for this one. Okay, format picture. It was, yeah. Oh, a row of wind turbines. <laughs> Every once in a while, Microsoft does it well. And that's cool. I'm pleased. But I'm going to take the extra little verbiage out of there. With me being confident. Sometimes it's pretty funny. It'll make you smile, which is cool. All right. So now let's look at the rest of the document. Um, get out of that. All right. We did the alt text. We did the um, headings. Okay. Oh, and what I've done on this document for you is that I'm supposed to be doing the one above and then you would do the one below, but apparently I've gotten confused. But now we're going to go forward. Now we need to do an accessibility check. And when I was searching before, I never saw where they put it, which tells me this is an old one. And okay. Yeah, in the old ones, you go right here and you go and it's here. Accessibility practice is the title, the check for issues. And I can inspect the document here. Check for accessibility. That's the old ones. If you've got an older version, that's where it will be. It'll be there. Okay, so it tells me I have errors and I have warnings. Oh. And part of it is because this particular document, I only did one section of it. So the other two, that's why there's unclear hypertext, um, but I can click on it. All right, missing alt text, and I can go to there. And they're saying that I didn't tell what that one was. Okay, and so I can fix that. Right click, and they also tell you how to do it which is really very useful. All right, so we're here, we're on it. We're gonna right click. We're gonna go down to format picture. We're gonna to go to the image and there's the alt text. And we call this renewable energy in California, solar panels. Okay, so that was that one. So I'm done with that one. So I can close that one. Infrequent headings. Okay, there's problems because I didn't finish the whole document. Unclear hyperlinks, but it gives you everything you need to do. And it's all right there. And as you saw, when you correct it, it disappears. Okay, all right. I want to go to PowerPoint. Let me um, make sure to unpause your share. Unpause my share. Okay, just one second. I'm going to not save it so I can use it again. All right. Now I'm going back to my document up here and I can then go to. Say, oh, we're, we're here. Okay. I recognized it. And I'm going to go to the PowerPoint. So in Word, alt text. If you want to be really great, identify the picture and where you got it. That's going to come. So you're just ahead of the game. Um, alt text, headings, 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 headings. 
and then don't put spaces in, don't use the color and things like that. Okay, you're good. Okay, for right now, you're gonna be good. Okay, so now let's look at PowerPoint because again, just like with the other, if you do a few things, you're good. Okay, all right, so. Nobody, many, uh -huh. sorry, nobody on Zoom can see your share because it's still paused. How do you pause it? Oh, you can use your share. Oh, I must have hit the button. I am so sorry. It's oh, mm -hmm. been a while since I've used a big one. All right. All right. Let's get rid of you. Okay. Now, just looking at this presentation, this is a simple PowerPoint. I don't think you're going to think it's too weird. Okay. It's over here. So we've got that screen, then we've got that screen, then we've got that screen, then we've got that screen. Okay, it doesn't look bad. So now let's go to the accessibility, and I will. I'll check to see if they put it here. Oh, it is. Can't tell you why. All right. Missing slide title. Actually. There's 11 missing slide titles. When you do PowerPoint and you start at the beginning, remember how they, oh, wrong thing. Okay, so we're gonna go to home. And right at home, they, they have you put in a slide, insert a slide. Uh, let's look at the different designs. These are formatted for a screen reader to read. Don't start with the blank one because there's no title on a blank one. There's no titles of the slides. You're not giving anything to the accessibility reader to use. But if you start here, see the work's already done for you. If not, you get to go back and fix it. Okay, so let's go back and fix it. All right. Um, okay, so let's go back to the first one. And they said that there's missing titles. So they're showing me which titles are missing titles. So slide one's missing a title. Now, if I click on, I wish I had checked this machine with it so I could, because what happens is that a little command comes up and says, do you want to use this for your title? And you say yes, and you move on to the next one. That's how easy this is, okay? Uh, slide title, right there. Set as the slide title, done. Okay, next one, slide two. That is the slide title. This is not hard. <laughs> now, let's pretend there's one screen that you wanted to be the whole picture. You've done this before. I have too. You, you don't want a title on it. The aesthetics is not what you want. So let's go to slide title. And you can put it behind. So I could say, I don't know. One when making pottery. <laughs> I've also seen people do this. Uh, okay, I'm not seeing Let's see if I can do it with this one. Okay, I'm going to come here to that title and I'm going to grab it. Hopefully. There. And I'm going to move it up. You're kind of cheating. It's still there for the screen reader. It's just off screen, right? It's off screen. So you can do that too. So that's kind of cool. All right. So they're talking about missing slide titles. You need to go through all those. And then um, I need to tell it the order of reading. Oh, here's the alt text. It's all right here for me. So I could write here that this is the woman making pottery. Okay, so that one's, oops, would be good if I spelled it right. Okay. All right, and so you can do that. And then we want to also do, over here is the accessibility, oops.
Nope, not that one, sorry. How oh, interesting. I've got my commands, but I don't have the rest of the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. All right. I think because you went to the slideshow. Right? I think I did. I think that's what I did. So let's go back and get out. We're out of this. Do you want to go to the current slide? Well, the current slide, I just wanted you to be able to get my information of what time we at. Oh, you know what? You're right. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry I wasn't able to finish the PowerPoint. Okay. But the PowerPoint, use the suggestions they made for layout. Be sure you have a title on everyone. That be sure that you have all text on everyone. These are the same things. And as you get used to them, they won't seem so intimidating, okay? All right, now the next question is where should you start? And start where you are now. Don't try and do all of the stuff you've ever created because you are creators and you've got lots of stuff. So start today with what you're starting to create. And then if you need to bring a document from the past and use it again, change that one. So to have a plan, um, learn more from all the resources that we've looked at today. Um, start small. This can be incredibly intimidating. Pardon, yeah, it can be incredibly intimidating. Um, it, it can just uh, frustrate you and make you want to quit. If you are in a program, like there's several teachers in the program, several ESL teachers, several ABE teachers, or even just several programs that want to get going on this, work together. Create documents together and make that work. Um, share your results. And don't worry about yesterday. When you start thinking about this and thinking about the liability and that there's documents out there online that you created and they're not accessible and oh my goodness, um, lions and tigers and bears, oh my. Intent is important. You're starting from today and you're working on it. So let that be your guide. Um, for me, my accessibility 101 would be to practice using the Microsoft accessibility tools that we did to the Word, Microsoft PowerPoint, and practice the accessibility. Find out where it's on your machine so that you can easily access it and use it. Practice using the color contrastor. That one's a big one, and it's a simple one. You, It's not going to be a hard one, especially watching that video on how to use it, and you'll be able to then use it all the time. Um, I would Please tell you. Excuse the interruption. Good morning, OTAN attendees. <laughs> Lunch is now being served in room 203. Oh. This is the same room you visited this morning for coffee and pastries. A very important note if you have not registered or checked in, please do so before getting lunch. Your event batch will be required. Please go to the counseling center, which is located adjacent to the main office. Thank you. Very good. We'll hurry so that you can be able to turn the line. All right. <laughs> I would tell you to go here, the National Center on Accessibility. I learned so much. I went everywhere and spent days reading, 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 reading. And you will feel more comfortable when you do that. But this one really was remarkable to me and very helpful. And then definitely check the OTAN resources because they update them. They, they have all of the different kinds of things you need to be concerned about, and they're all there. So definitely try those. All right. Lois Rhodes on Zoom says, thank you. Very good. Oh, very good. All right. Here's the website again, so that you can be sure that you can get the copy of the documents to practice with. Be sure that when you take those documents and use them, that you create them in Word or you download a copy so that you can have the original and you can go back and do it again until you feel real com comfortable with it. Anytime you would, if my help can be a benefit to anybody, <laughs> Just contact me at SCOE, D. Jensen at SCOE, and love to help. Um, 
I have now a different attitude. And when I do the accessibility checker and it says you have no accessibility issues, I feel so good. <laughs> and so that's what I hope for you. So good luck to everybody.